this scene of Isaac whipping himself really reminds me of the flagellants, a group of priests and monks in the 14th century that whipped themselves in order to retain purity and to deal with their sins. Why does Isaac feel this need to have to punish himself? But is that really the way that he feels about it? Is this a punishment or is this a disciplined action? It seems almost like a ritual that brings him a sense of peace and centering. And in this way, it seems more meditative than something that is done out of angst or anger. And there's a very specific personality type that will go through repetitive behaviors, even if they are in a way self-harm. But for self-harm, often that is something that you are trying to express a certain emotion that you cannot share or that's repressed inside of you or to be able to stop something. And often also it happens because you don't feel comfortable to be able to share what it is on the outwards way. And so you end up expressing that on yourself. And if you are someone that is prone to self-harm, you should really work on it. One is because it's damaging to yourself and it's maladaptive and Two, because it's something that doesn't actually fix the problem. You may not think or feel it in the moment, but it doesn't actually change anything in the long run. But Isaac doing this is not the same way of self harm. He's doing this as an act of meditation and focusing for himself in order to keep himself disciplined. And I think that those two things, the reasons for them and the reasons that they're doing them are completely different. This would be much more similar to someone that's having an ice bath or walking over hot coals, which is really dangerous, or staying silent in a silent retreat for a period of time. This is him putting mind over matter and trying Trying to remain focused and disciplined to prove to himself something. You thieving little sh I'm trying to learn how, how to help you. Oh. For Isaac, him caretaking someone else, doing something that's outside of the range of what other people would do, is the way that he shows love and a thank you to others. It's often, especially when we're children, when we give someone something that we see as coming from our heart, they don't receive it really well. It can be exceptionally painful because we give when we're young in such a pure way. When we give something, we often give everything. And to have that perhaps denied or not accepted the way that we hope that it will be received can be really crushing to our spirit and our sense of self, plus our sense of safety. Because I love you. Well, I love you too. This is how I teach you to never use the word love again. Isaac has such a purity about the way that he expresses things. He's very black and white. This isn't a personality type that probably actually was grown into because of the things that have happened to him. Often this is a personality type that you are born with, your levels of being more flexible and being more rigid. There are certain traits that come with having more of a rigid personality type. It could be being more meticulous, dealing with things that are in repetition, perfectionism, having a very black and white worldview. That can make interacting with someone that has more of a rigid personality type very difficult because there are not that many avenues. There's only right and wrong, good and bad, the way that things should be and the way that things shouldn't. It was often said that if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. Meaning that if I'm not beating you, I am raising you improperly. The thing is, is that being hurt, showing violence, especially to a child that has done only a minor infraction, or even if you've done something that was really bad, even something that some may say is deserving of being hit, which is a huge controversial issue. All you're doing is you're teaching someone to be afraid. You want to parent to be able to say that 
you're teaching someone the ways of the world, how to exist, what are the rules? And really what you're saying is that big people can hurt smaller people. Because I am larger, it's not an adaptive skill. It's not something that you can then go around and if you're upset at your boss or your boyfriend or girlfriend or someone that's on the street, I can then just hit you because I feel frustrated or upset at you. Even if you did something wrong, teaching that lesson is maladaptive. And so you end up giving the other person a feeling of powerlessness and fear. You end up perhaps controlling behavior out of fear, not out of respect. And they can then become either more devious and sneaky and less honest because of that fear that something bad is going to happen to them. And so you're actually teaching people a lesson that you wouldn't want them to learn by hurting them. There are certain personality types and certain things that we've seen that people have had a weapon being used against them and they end up using that to empower them. Certain words that are used against certain groups, sometimes then they take and incorporate that word to become something that is a symbol of them going against the power that was trying to subvert them or keep them down. That's another way that Isaac uses this spiked belt to discipline and focus his mind. I think that for him, it's so he never forgets. No such thing as love in this world. And so he does this to remind himself not to love. When we're young, we're so vulnerable to the lessons that other people are teaching us because our brain is still developing. And so because of that, our sense of safety and our belief system is very malleable. He doesn't want to have love again because it caused him so much pain. But there's something so pure about the way that Isaac goes about his relationships. I think that we would have to have a debate on whether or not you think that Isaac still does feel love, even though he may not call it that. Why do you do that? The whipping. Discipline, choosing my own actions and inuring myself to a world of horrors. He's the one that's in control. The thing that used to be used against him. And that makes us feel a sense of control in the world that no one else can hurt me because I'm already doing it to myself. And it's no longer a sense of pain. I think that that's really important to do more of an internal way, being able to confront our own sense of negative self-talk, of things that have hurt us in the past. Sometimes we try to just close it up and not actually deal with it. And I don't think that the way that Isaac is dealing with it is truly confronting it, but to be able to do that more internally of what are the things that have hurt us, what are the causes to that, and how am I going to be able to restructure that so that I can have a better sense of self? Because unfortunately, when we're told something enough times, especially when we're young, it becomes true even if it's a complete lie and you need to confront them because it's so true to you that even if other people tell you you're smart, you're worthwhile, you're deserving of love, you may not believe it. Useless thing. Now do you filthy human magic with it? I'm sorry you struggled so hard to come back home. So loyal. And look at the difference between the way that Godbrand looks at the creature that returned as something that's useless, whereas Isaac sees the beautiful loyalty and care that it has for its creators. That even though it was horribly injured, it wanted to make its way back home. And this is Isaac projecting himself onto others. That's the way that he is. And so he can appreciate creatures that would be thrown away or not even given a second thought because that trait is something that really matters to him. Perhaps this is all loyalty buys in a world without love, pain in the night. He speaks of this world without love, but you can see the tenderness and care and a sense of honor and ritual that he gives to this creature, almost like there's a ceremony to his sacrifice that he really acknowledges it. And I don't think that many people would do that to a creature that has been used as a pawn in your war game. Sorry, I'm, I'm just thinking, I'll just think out loud, but I think that it's really beautiful to have, to be remembered. Your sacrifice meant something. And I think that for many of us, that's what we hope for. And so I think that that's another one of these wonderful, endearing qualities that Isaac has. And I think that it also makes me go back to 
Hmm. Is Isaac truly someone that has gotten rid of his sense of love and I think that he's more kind of tried to replace it with discipline and loyalty to not be this warm loving person because that hurt him so dearly yet his actions are so pure and not just because he's being rigid and because this is a rule for him he didn't have to touch the creature and give it a moment and say something he chose to do that and it's often not in our words but in our actions that the truth is shown. I still, and again, maybe this is me projecting myself, but I still feel this sense of love in Isaac. Perhaps that's all that awaits me too. You came home regardless. The lesson here is that I shouldn't care either. That even though this would be considered by many just this lowly creature, he learns from it and he adapts to that and he can find the symbolism in things that other people would not see. It's a really nice personality trait to be able to look at things with a clarity and a depth that you can learn and become a better person because of it. He has just so many really nice personality traits. There's so many things of Isaac that I find really endearing and it's interesting because he comes off as this exceptionally disciplined rigid person but I think that that is mostly a defense that there's so many layers to him that are underneath of care and protection and loyalty and friendship beneath that and hope which is I think things that Isaac would not like me saying about him. I want of all things a pure world, a clean world where there is only loyalty and only love. He still carries this wound of what is love and what is loyalty because he's had those two pieces taken away from him. But that's what he sees it as. Loyalty to him is love and that's the way that he shows it. And often the way that we give a gift to others is the gift that we hope to receive ourselves. It's just so damn good. I heard you moving across the sand. That's very good, Isaac. Most people can't hear me moving at all. And the first thing that Dracula does is he gives Isaac a very heartfelt compliment. Simple, direct, straightforward. Something that Isaac could accept. Saying good job or that was great, that kind of just goes into our mind and then goes out. Saying this is a character trait and this is the reason why it's special that kind of sticks and actually makes us internalize it so we believe and look at ourselves a little bit differently also. A very fatherly thing to do. Do you remember how we first met, Isaac? That would be difficult to forget. Say the words so I know you are still my friend. I love that line. Say the words so I know you are still my friend. It's kind of ritualistic. This is their way of restating their vows to each other, their promise, their bond to each other. That Dracula even cares what Isaac thinks. Dracula, he doesn't care what anyone thinks except for Lisa and he's lost her. To even hear Dracula say the word friendship, what an honor for Isaac. That shows how much Isaac really matters to Dracula. This is not about a plan. This is not about war. This is something that Isaac matters to him as a person. But by isn't this great? Who wanted to kill me. So good. And you saved me. I did. The only person in the world who ever lifted a hand to protect me from anything. And he was not a human. When people don't see you as being valued or that you don't matter because of your looks or where you've come from or who you've been, to have people truly see you and value you for the inside, not for this bloody shell that we are born into that we really don't have any say about, which most things we don't, where we live, who are our parents, none of that really matters. That's all ephemeral. That's all things that don't really talk about our character. Dracula saw Isaac for who he is as a person. For someone like Isaac that's kind of black and white, that is such a huge sense of loyalty and we know that Isaac sees loyalty as love. You are still my friend. I am. Oh, I love it! I just 
love it. I know, I know, Dracula, I should be feeling all of these horrible feelings. He's done horrible things. But there is something so human. I know he'd be insulted, but it's something so human about that sense of he's lost everything and now people are questioning who he is and what he's doing. To have someone that's still so steadfast and loyal in this pure way to you and how he really recognizes that. And you can tell there was like emotions in his voice when he said it. There is definitely a lot of humanity in Vlad Tepes. The human race has betrayed me for one final time and they must be punished. You need an army of the night? You sound suspicious. Your passions are rare and pure. War sounds like a small thing for you. He sees humans as undisciplined and overtaken by their passions and their needs and their greed. Versus he sees Dracula as more animalistic, that he does things for more of a pure cause, love, hatred, defense, protection. That's probably maybe one of the reasons why he whips himself is to try to get rid of those pieces of the humanity that he doesn't like within himself. Though I would say really what you want to do is to be able to come to peace with all of the pieces of yourself, even the ones that you don't like. They're all there for a reason, even if you don't want to continue to exhibit it. You can work on those traits in other ways that are much more adaptive and will actually cause a more realistic change. And you want my help to do it? Yes. Even though I'm a human being, do you remember my first words to you? Yeah. Indulge me, Master Dracula, so that I may know you are still my friend. I love it! <laughs> That's so good! I love it! I love that he brings it back around. Even though he calls him Master Dracula, when they are in this space, their friendships are equal and that he requests this of Dracula and Dracula indulges him shows what a close, tight-knit bond that they both have with each other. And besides Lisa and Dracula, it's actually my favorite relationship of the show is the way that they interact with each other. There's something so beautiful, and I'll say it, loving about the way that they deal with things together. You said, I have no fear of death. It always sounded peaceful to me. I will be loyal to the end and beyond. And you know he means it. It's the way that he delivers these words, they're even. He doesn't have more bravado or inflection. It's just the way that he is. Even, steadfast, meticulous, and direct. This is wrong. This is all wrong. Like, I'll say it because I always get those comments of like, you know, but they're trying to kill people. Yes, yes. This is completely and utterly wrong. There are people that are good and caring and loving and you could go through this in a different way, of course. But for both of them, they see things in a black and white way. For Isaac, because of all of the abuse that he suffered as a child and for Dracula, because of the things that have happened to him and to his love. And so that has tainted the way that they look at the world as seeing it as very black and white and that the infestation isn't the things, the creatures of the night that are pure and just want things because of hunger and need, but people and humans that do things out of greed and maliciousness. And so they're trying to eradicate that to make what they believe is a more pure world. I wish you would stop doing that. It's sick. The body is sick. It must be purged. It must be focused. This is holy work. Rigid personality types often are more obsessive and they do things in very ritualistic ways. This rigidity can often also lead to a need to be meticulous. It can also be one of those precursors to having obsessive compulsive disorder. Now again, just because you have one of the traits of it doesn't mean that you have OCD specifically. You would want to get that diagnosed properly. Well, talking about choices, Carmilla's making a lot of sense to me. There's no plan. It may be time for the old man to sit in his study and let the rest of us take care of this for him. <laughs> And so it makes this a very black and white decision. He's loyal to Dracula, Godbrand is no longer loyal to, Dr to Dracula, and so Godbrand has to go. But the way that he handles it is really interesting.
So even though Godbrand was going to betray Dracula, Isaac still gives him a proper send-off, pays a tribute to Godbrand, probably because of the time before the loyalty that he gave, or perhaps that is his feeling of life and death when you have returned to the earth. All of that life is worthy of having a proper send-off. But I thought that it was like a really interesting nod that it wasn't just someone that he disrespected because of this is the way that Godbrand changed. And they didn't even get along that well. But he has a certain amount of chivalry and courteousness about the way that he goes about things. This is just the right thing to do and that's why he does it. Behind me, Dracula, will not reach you while I live. You would give your mortal life to preserve my immortal one? To save your genius, your knowledge, and your will without question. But do you think that that's all the reason that Isaac wants to defend Dracula this much? That sounds great. He's really smart. Is that really why he cares about him so much? I don't think so. You are the greatest of your people, Isaac. You have a soul, I think. Perhaps that is more valuable to the world to come. Or perhaps you simply deserve a better fate than to die instead of me. That's so beautiful, right? That Dracula, who doesn't really have any hope or belief in humanity except for Lisa, who he loved. But he can see in Isaac all of these beautiful traits that I don't even think that Isaac fully acknowledges or understands. In a way, I think that Dracula and Isaac's relationship was so much more than friendship. It really was this fatherly relationship, the things that he wanted from someone else he got from Dracula. I choose my death as I chose my life. Then I regret only that I have taken a choice for you. And I love his last words, that thought of that he recognizes that this is not what Isaac would want, but that he wants to keep him safe, even if that means his own death. Dracula, this person that wants to wipe out the world, will risk himself for Isaac. And what else is love? No! Dracula! No! And no, that is not the way that Isaac would have wanted to go. But in the end, Isaac ended up getting what he really did hope for someone that saw him for who he was. Creating the hordes of undead may be something which shapes a character, but if you're looking to create your own character, that's where you may be better off trying out today's sponsor, World Anvil. As someone who's battled with cave trolls in dungeons, run in the shadows, hammered wars, and basically played RPGs all my life, today's sponsor, World Anvil, is incredibly perfect. Whether you're game mastering, game planning, writing, doing all kinds of world building, World Anvil has you covered with 25 amazing article templates that you can use to create wiki style presentations, interactive maps, chronicles with interactive timelines, which you can literally map out events across time and space. And for player characters, you really don't have to worry about finding all of your notes and gathering all of your stuff because there's just so many things that we have. And though we love our dice, which I completely do. It's a lot to manage with all of my papers and all of my books. And so World Anvil makes everything really simple. If you're playing D&D like me, World Anvil supports the fifth edition, but it also supports more than 45 other RPG games. And you can create your own worlds to really bring your campaigns to life. Basically, it has all the best tools to help you write, organize, enjoy, publish with rich settings, complex characters, manage, all stories on a single platform. The world building is fun even if you're not making a module. It's every RPG player's dream. If you've ever lost a character like I have, be it in Waterdeep, Ravenloth, or in the streets of Shadowrun, you're not gonna have to worry about it with World Anvil. It is one website to rule them all and keep them safe at the same time. You can sign up completely for free, but if you're watching this video, you can try out World Anvil for a limited time for 40% off an annual membership using the code Georgia Dow. So just click on the link in the description and use the code Georgia Dow. By clicking on that link, it really does help out this channel. So thank you so much, World Anvil, and hopefully I'll see you 
in the next video. So you let me know your thoughts on Isaac and whether or not he expressed love and still felt it or was able to become disciplined and be without it and his relationship with Dracula. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.